My name is Blake Goodwin. I'm the founder and president of Proportion Design, a boutique branding agency here in the greater Boston region. Um, we pretty much service uh, hospitality and real estate across lifestyle and sort of apparel slash food and bev um, industries to a certain extent. And we like to think that we bring uh, some pretty creative ideas and are able to see them through to fruition. Um, and really have a really nailed down a process in doing that and really work with some great people to help also uh, recognize everything that we're doing. Hi Blake, how you doing today? Good, my attic's heating up though. <laughs> I can see there are cars going by with a little like little, little like light going back and forth. Um, you look very swanky, my friend. Your haircut is not like everyone else that I've spoken to. I think, yeah, that's, it's almost like, um, you're speaking to a design industry person along the line somewhere you have to see like a self haircut. I love it. You, well, you did a great job. Um, Thank you. Tell, me, tell me about how you started your company because um, you didn't just like plop out of nowhere saying like, this is like my company where, like, who are you? Where do you start? And how did this company come to be? Yeah. So I'm originally from uh, the Bangor Maine region, a pretty rural area uh, came to Boston by way of BU um studied graphic design there and actually the company name proportion um was in reference to a comment i received in a design critique early on from a professor it said that i had a good sense of proportion and i just grabbed onto that and i knew that was going to be something um and then fast forward now 10 15 however many years it's been uh my partner paul and I met um, in the development of our last company called Arteic and uh, really kind of jived pretty well together in terms of the way we work and sort of our outlook on, on life and I think business in general. Um, and after kind of getting Arteic to a, a decently stable uh, spot from our perspective, um, broke off and said, hey, let's, let's give a, a design slash branding agency a go. What was one of the hardest parts for you to decide to branch off and what was the easiest part um, a lot of people are thinking about starting a company right now because they're at home um they have been thinking about it for quite some time but now they've been home for quite some time and they're realizing more and more this may be the moment um yep. so you had a i mean i know our i know you personally and professionally um our ticket has a great reputation in regards of what they're producing you're doing very very well you didn't have to leave but then you decided to branch off why um, it got to the point where, you know, I think there was a solid enough professional network that I knew I could tap into at that point. Um, that was probably one of the biggest drivers. Um, and we had some people asking us to do stuff in the realm of what we do now all the time. Um, so there's a couple of opportunities there. And then the third component is really just making that leap and not thinking about it any further than that. <laughs> Because otherwise, meaning, what do you mean? Um, just really saying, go for it. And, and quite honestly, I also had the support from my wife. She's like, you know, if you're not going to do it now, when are you ever going to do it? Sort of thing. Um, and that's it. You know, you hear that a lot. I think across entrepreneurialism and entrepreneur stories, um, and it it rang true. You know, couldn't really think about it anymore, any further. And that was the time. What are you finding that's happening to your industry before you talk about your company, but what are you finding that's happening to your industry right now because of the pandemic? I mean, for our industry overall, I actually am not very uh, in tune with. Um, I am of the mentality of like, I don't, for example, I don't go to design networking events really. I always say that my customers aren't there. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But for us, I think in, in general, probably what a lot of people are experiencing is just an overall kind of slowdown. Um, but it is case by case basis. In some instances, our type of work has been pushed to the forefront of people's efforts. So I think in, in all of that, again, kind of any industry, things are just kind of fragmented right now at, at the pace of things. And so I imagine that a lot of people are, are experiencing that. So the good thing is you have an uptick. So why do you feel that you guys are getting an uptick where everyone else is slowing down? Um, so a couple of things, 
you know, again, it depended on the project and kind of where it stood, if it's real estate, maybe in the uh, construction cycle um, or the financing around something uh, and where there was opportunities to have like marketing and stuff kind of backfill where people were spending time elsewhere. That's where we've seen some opportunity. Um, other things is, have just basically been re-engaging pretty thoughtfully with our existing partner base, our customers, uh, the ones that we've been working with now for five years continuously, and just really shoring up all of those relationships and um, also looking just to, to drop some, some messaging in there in terms of relevancy. So again, to come back to real estate as, as an example, branding is great. Sometimes it might not always be there for somebody's project perspective, but like big signage packages might be. So it's really being for us, you know, we're four people, five or six, including however you count it. Um, just being nimble, uh, which we can be. I think that's one of the, one of the things that um, people, well, be, uh, in Massachusetts, we're in, we're going into week nine, week nine, um, not knowing if we are going to open or how we're going to open. But um, announcement is going to be that we're going to open some form starting next week. Um, for a lot of people, week one and two were shock. Week yeah. four became full-on crisis management. Um, branding is part of the crisis management rollout for a lot of people. What are the best advices or, and support that you gave to your clientele? And what, should you, what would be helpful to people that are just really slow to the game and are, they're still in the shock value moment? Yeah, I mean, again, starting archaic in a, the 2008 recession we're, we're well versed at companies and recessions at this point um it's making sure you, in even in a like in a competitive market we always say that branding is very important to differentiate um, to stand out um and then the same methodology and strategic process that we go through in a time like this is to make sure that your messaging is relevant um, so relevancy is a, is a big thing and a lot of the, the practices that we, um, implement with our partners, you know, a lot of that comes to fruition, uh, kind of just looking at the market broadly and what you want to be. And it's also all part of that process is really finding out the DNA and who these organizations are, uh, and then obviously making a, an applicable market facing brand around that so it's it's any kind of uh market really is a good time to go through the branding exercise so that you are honest and, and forward with your your customer base about where you stand either in an up market or a down market what are some steps that uh a company whether um, whether it's small whether it's micro whether it's small whether it's medium whether it's large what are some steps they should think about? Because again, we have the abundance of time that we need to think about our branding. Um, we have been complacent for quite some time and now we should probably think about, are we doing the right things to the right people? What are one or two things that you could give for some advice that people should start considering right now? I mean, I would just use what I said about what we do for a, as a service offering. Think about where you know, aspects of your company are relevant in the current marketplace, where you can maybe pivot other aspects to be more relevant or maybe even forget about some things if that, if the writing's on the wall. Um, you know, it's a part of our process with our partners is, is that critical thought that really during the strategic elements mm -hmm. and you know, it's, I think everybody can take a critical look at what they do at this point and, and kind of couple it with what maybe is starting to shape up as the future and, you know, really think about where you fit in um, and in what way. And again, that's, that's something that we naturally do in our, when we engage on a, on a strategic brand development process. So. So, yeah. During this Good time, you have, I mean, you've had, you've had time. You've had plenty of time to look at your own business. 
what have you created that's new that you would have never thought about doing because now you have the time to think about it or because you've had these conversations with clients and you're thinking, Hey, we should kind of consider something. So, um, the past five years, we've just really been running before we could walk sort of thing because the market was so great. Um, we have some great partners, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of action. And through that whole process, we've been not back full filling fully, but kind of in parallel building all of the processes of our company and our service offering and just the operations. Um, a big component of that is really like our, our own messaging and positioning, um, which has really gone through sort of iterated, iterative, um, cycles kind of as needed and on the fly. Um, and I've been so excited to send out, um, a new deck, to a few people just like this week because we finally gave all of that a really big um, piece of mental effort over the past roughly two weeks and it yep. landed finally to where it needed to be um, <laughs> so that was like that was number one um, and then on the other side it was really in in that sprint mode that we've been in for so many years you know obviously we've had good relationships but it's also been taking some time to to reach out see how everybody's doing um where there probably wasn't the amount of time there as there should have been to do those types of things um, previous to this so that's another component um those are two of the biggest things that i've been doing recently i love it um how's the team doing especially virtual you're not seeing each other like like you're not seeing each other in the, your space so how yeah. is everyone doing in their own little space? Okay, uh, so we have a standing nine o'clock um, uh, Google Hangout mm -hmm. uh, to go through projects and, and it really has, much of it has been like 20 minutes, half an hour, just uh, you know, shooting the shit really. <laughs> uh, kind of that cultural connection between why we are all a team. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so our designer and our project manager, they're on the younger side and they're, I think, pretty much itching to get out of their parents' houses. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's doing well. Okay, good. Um, juggling a business, juggling your customers, um, making sure that emotional um, capacity is all good with your team and you're at home with the family. Yeah. That going. So we bought a house in September, um, my wife and I, because we had twins. Um, and last, we just turned one year old. Um, so we had a condo in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And once we found out we had twins, we're like, oh crap, we need to get into house mode. <laughs> we need a little space. Uh, yeah, so, but now fast forward to now, the multi-level living is, um, is a savior. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my office in this unfinished bedroom in the attic and my wife works in our bedroom on the second floor and then the basement has turned into my bike shop. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the twins are just kind of hanging out. We, we have an au pair. Um, so we're extremely fortunate that our daily uh, childcare activities weren't affected by this. Whereas like somebody else like Paul with the three and four year old or three and almost five, uh -huh. he had to go move back with like his parents for a couple months now. And like his sister, who's an uh, elementary school teacher, is doing the daycare. It's like oh. all everybody going through that right now. I definitely empathize um, with that situation. You know, but they're 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 making it work, which is like a fantastic thing. Um, it is. Um, I think that people are finding really really good ways to be creative, um, as creative as they possibly can. And especially when you're able to have those those family members that are able to support you, it's a win win win. Um, if your day, I mean, like if this, this entire bizarre, unique situation that we're in right now ends tomorrow in a perfect world, uh, what is your first day looking like? I think we go back to the studio. So our, our current studio is in um, Paul's attic. Be good to get everybody back in there. Um, and then we signed a lease in Malden Center on a small space just before all this went down. Um, it's not a huge concern because it's a pretty affordable spot but we had a build out underway mm -hmm. and planned um and everybody was excited to get in there to finally have like a cool 
office space. Um, and we were also utilizing that. We were aggressively looking to hire another designer and an art director this year, which that immediately kind of slowed down. Um, but getting that office space back up to snuff uh, or on the books and underway would be number one. Um, and just then from there, continuing to do business as usual. Beautiful. Last question, because I know you're busy. Um, if you had an ask, an ask for yourself and an ask for your company, um, for anyone and everyone that's listening, what would that ask be? Oh, I'd say um, for our, well, i say for everybody, just I think probably stay open in communication around kind of where everybody is at personally from a business standpoint and then all together kind of as we work together in this. Um, and also I think just think again, going back to a business, thinking critically about what does the future hold potentially? Um, and I'd say in, in thinking critically, never be scared of anything. Um, just being honest and realistic. Um, I think that'd be probably good for everybody to, to try to do as much as possible because then that'll make everything else as smooth as it can be as we kind of continue on with whatever all of this is. Like, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've known you again. I've known you for, I like, I met you at the, I met you at the last world implosion show. I, it was the last recession. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> it's like, it's funny where I'm like, okay, I can't believe in our lifetime. We're like seeing it, you know, so close. I expect it to 20, 30 years from now, but I do love, um, talking to all my friends that I met literally 10 years ago when this first yeah. happened and where we were and to see how you built a business. I mean, I met you from another place, but you built a business, you have a team, um, the positiveness of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Cause we, we, we've been through this ride before. So I appreciate you taking the ride. I appreciate you being here and talking to me for a few minutes. Um, and when this is all over, I am going to come back to you because I want to talk to you in your space. Uh, with sure. all the team behind you, which will be really cool, and to hear all the new projects that you roll out. That'd be great. I think uh, we're all in it for the ride, aren't we? We are in it for a ride, and, and you know, I, mean, I don't know, not that I wish this on anybody, but I hope I don't speak to you for a, in a topic like that for another 20 years, because <laughs> we need to get through this one, and we're due to like not see this until like we're in our past our retirement years. Right. Well, well, we'll speak when the teams are back together. That'd be awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jody.